for the presence of God. Yes, Amen. sir. And for who we are. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So let's go right into it because, like I say, we got quite a few scripture references. Amen. Tonight. So we'll go right into the word of the Lord tonight. Hebrews chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. Amen. Then verily, the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service. Everybody say divine service. Divine service. Amen. It, it was not just ordinary service. It was divine service. And a worldly sanctuary. And there was a tabernacle made. The first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread table and the showbread, amen, which is called the sanctuary, and after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant, and over it the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. I want to read verse 6 again because it's, it's very uh, imperative that we get hold of verse 6 and verse 7. Now when these things were ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second, if I say the second, second, with the high priest alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost, this signified that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. Well, as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure of the time then present in which we offered both gifts, were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and in divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. Verse 11, but Christ become an high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and of calves, but by his own blood. He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained, everybody say obtained, obtained. eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and, and, and heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the puring of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Praise God. Amen. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you for the word of the Lord. Thank you for everyone that is present God, I pray, Lord, that our ears will be open, our hearts to receive. Give us understretch instruction tonight. In Jesus' name, thank you for your blessings. In the name of Jesus, amen. Everybody said in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And so in our scripture reading tonight, and I will be uh, the first one to tell you that, that uh, the subject matter that, that we are going to cover tonight, I am certainly just skimming the surface. Uh, because it's a deep, deep, deep subject that, you, that covers a tremendous amount of scripture. Amen. But I want to, as it were, amen, just kind of touch the surface of it. Amen. And give us a, a understanding, praise God, of how blessed you and I are. Amen. The, the priest, amen, as they walked into, amen, the tabernacle and they went, 
amen, into the, the, the holy place. And they begin to make their uh, rituals, their ordinances, their service, and amen, they would make their, their sacrifice with blood, and they would go to the, the labor, the, the place where they washed, and they would go through all of this, amen. And, and you can imagine as they're walking through that tabernacle, Brother West, and amen, they, they glance up at the lamb. Yes. And they know, I can't go there. They know that that is not my place. And, amen. That's for one man and one man only, the high priest. Yes, sir. And he can't even access that place only once a year. Yes, sir. And there was divine laws the commandments of God that, that this is no light taking. This is something that everyone that had any idea of what's going on took it tremendously serious because you will find in the Bible that it was a life and death situation that if the high priest was to go into the, the holiest of all and he had sin in his own life it was a death sentence he would die before he ever got out of the tabernacle he would die amen because amen of sin Amen. Here we are. Praise God. And that, that went on. Amen. Throughout. Amen. The, the wilderness, the tabernacle. Amen. So on and so forth. All those hundreds of years. Amen. That this same ritual went. And, and every year the high priest would go. Amen. Into the holiest of all. Not without blood. And he would go and he would sprinkle the blood upon the mercy seat. Amen. And their sins would be rolled away. Amen. Ahead for a year. Amen. It couldn't do away with that sin. It would just roll it up. Amen. For a year and year after year this took place. Amen. And then, amen, that the problem that people had, the religious crowd had with Jesus was that he made himself out to be what they could not accept. He made himself to be, amen, a priest. He made himself out to be the son of God. He made himself out to be, amen, the lamb of God, yes. the Messiah, yes. the Rabboni. Oh. Praise God. And so, amen, they had a problem with this. And, amen, that is one of the reasons why, amen, they crucified him because they believed that he blasphemed. Jesus. Amen, are you with me? Yes, yeah. oh. Amen, what the Bible said, amen, that there is going to, amen, that there was a revelation, amen, that came to all of those that knew anything about the tabernacle, anything about the holiest of all, amen, that there was about to be a revelation, amen, that it's going to come to them, amen, it's revealed to them in Matthew chapters 27, verse 50 and 51, that when Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross and they mocked him. Are you with me? Yes. The Jews mocked him. Uh, Amen. The Jews beat him. Uh, Amen. They spit upon him. Uh, they, they humiliated him. They mocked him. They beat him. And they nailed him to a cross. And Jesus Christ is suspended yeah. between heaven and earth. And Jesus had said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw oh, all men man. unto me. Amen. And something marvelous, something supernatural, amen, something oh. tremendous is about to happen in the midst of all the blood. And if you've got to understand that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission right. of sin. I'm sorry. Amen. Something powerful is about to happen. Amen. Yes, sir. Come on. Anybody that knew anything, amen, about what took place, amen, through all the wilderness, amen, Solomon's temple, amen, the revelation is about to come to the world. Amen. That the Bible said, and behold, amen, verse 50, Jesus, when he had cried, <coughs> 
again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the word behold means take notice. The veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. That veil that the high priest and the priest looked at and only had access to the high priest one time a year with the sacrifice. The veil was written plain. Amen. Not from the bottom to the top, but miraculously from the top to the bottom. Amen. Revealing. Amen. That divine access has been made. Amen. To everyone. Amen. That is washed in the blood. to you tonight. I want to teach us tonight. Amen. If you have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Amen. Washed in the blood. Amen. We sing it all the time and we mean it every time. Amen. I said we sing it all the time and we mean it every time. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so glad that he washed my sins away in his own blood. Amen. That when the Lord looks down at us that have been baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. He sees blood. He sees precious blood. He sees the blood of the Lamb. And because we're washed in the blood, we have divine access into the presence and the power. Amen. And those standing around, amen, said, surely this was the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. The revelation depicts Jesus as the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse uh, 50 and 51, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 11 through 20. Amen. The scripture said, and every priest standeth daily. Everybody say daily. daily. Ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth expecting till all his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he has perfected forever them. Oh, you got to hear this. Don't just skim over it. Amen. Don't, don't just look at it superficially and wonder what you're going to eat after church. Amen. You got to see this. Amen. For by one offering he has perfected. 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 Forever, forever them that are sanctified. Uh, hallelujah. 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 For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also with the witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts. And in their minds will I write them. And their sin. Oh, come on. If you ever needed a reason to shout, this would be come a on. good excuse right here. Yeah. Amen. For their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. The devil tried to bring up your past. He said, I won't remember.
and therefore, brethren, you with me? Yes. Amen. Preaching, teaching, hallelujah. About divine access. Verse 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness. Yeah. Everybody say boldness. boldness. Boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood. Hallelujah. By the blood. Are you with me? By the blood of Jesus. Boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Divine access. What are you doing dealing with the lights before church? Access. What are you doing? Clapping your hands. Raising your hands. Opening your mouth. And praising God. It's called access. Amen. And I'm leaving the, the normal, as it were, terra firma of life. Amen. And I, in my spirit, in my mind, in my conscience. Amen. I'm going to the presence of God. Verse 20, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having a heart sprinkled with an evil conscience, Amen. And our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, yeah. for he is faithful oh, that promise. Yeah. Right. Come on. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we see in this scripture, in verse 20, that the veil of the new covenant Amen. Was the body of Jesus Christ that was torn for us. And that blood that flowed from that spotless Lamb of God. Amen. Has washed us and cleansed us and purified us that we can go into the presence of God. But you've got to understand you just don't nonchalantly go. You just don't haphazardly go into the presence of God. Not if you know there's sin there. Not if you know there's, amen, bitterness there. Not if you know, amen, there's anger there. Not if you know, amen, that you got sin in your life. You just don't try to barge your way into the holiest of all. Amen, knowing there's sin there. Amen, that's why repentance is so important. That's why we why repentance is so powerful. That's the reason why you say, Brother Music, how often do you repent? Every single day of my life. Every single day of my life. Every single day of my life, I ask God to forgive me of my sin. Why? Hey, man, so I can enter into his presence. That I can make access, amen, into the holiest of all. Amen, and be in the presence, amen, of the almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen, Ephesians. Amen, chapter 2. Amen, Ephesians, chapter 2. Verse, look at verse 13. And then we'll go to verse 18. But now in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Are made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. Verse 18. For through him 
we both have access. Men are preaching about divine access. For through him we have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself, being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye are also built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. The Bible teaches us, the Apostle Paul told, taught us, amen, that our bodies is the temple yes. of the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. And the temple of the Holy Ghost is holy. Oh, no, no, no. Praise God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3. Amen. The Apostle Paul begins to, in Ephesians chapter 3, beginning verse 7. He begins to go in a little bit into his calling, into his ministry. And he says, verse 7, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, in this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been here in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Verse 12, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith in him. You, you need to look at verse 12. And in verse 12, there, there, there needs to be something inside of us that shouts yes. yes sir. There ought to be something inside you and me, Gentiles. Okay. Gentiles. Adopted into the family of God. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Not, oh, I'm trying to, trying to find the right word here. Help me, Jesus. Not fake All right. humiliation. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. No, but not, not holy boldness. Uh -huh. Confidence. Yes. yes, sir. You know when the, the scripture, and, and I'm chasing a rabbit here, but I won't chase it long, I promise. When the Bible said that the love of God is shed on our blood through the Holy Ghost, it's talking about the judgment. When we go to judgment and we stand before God, we can stand before God knowing 
everything's okay. All right. Not perfect. But forgiven. Praise God. Perfect love. Cast out all fear. That's right. Because fear had torment. Therefore, when we stand before God, there is no torment. Because there is no fear. Because perfect love. Not our love for him. His love for us. His perfect love. Yes, sir. Perfect love. We could take a survey tonight, which we will not. Because Pastor Risco would have to do a lot of marriage counseling afterward. If we was to And you could superficially answer yes because you don't want to get in trouble. Huh. Is your marriage perfect? Can we talk about this in private? <laughs> It's not. Why? Because ain't nobody in this building perfect. That's right. All of us got quirks. All of us got our little pet peeves. Amen. Sometimes that wonderful wife of mine, she forgets that my car runs this way and she wants to rub it that way. She ain't here tonight, so I can speak my peace, <laughs> please. <laughs> Aren't you thankful that our relationship with God is not based on our perfection? All right. For by grace are you saved right. through faith, and that not of yourself. Right. It oh. is the gift yeah. of God. That's exactly right. right. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Come on. Amen. That, that you and I, you and I can go to him in whom we have boldness. Yes, sir. Boldness. Oh. I remember. Years ago, when I passed in Plainview, Texas, we had some former Walmart folks here. I was a Kmart man myself. And I wore the, the beautiful red Kmart vest, had the Kmart pin, my name on it. When I put my Kmart vest on and I walked in that store, I was somebody. I was a Kmart employee. And you go to the back of the store and they had these two doors that, that walked into the some of the offices and some of the shipping department and all that stuff. And it said over the top of it, authorized personnel only. Uh -huh. Huh. Huh. That was me. I didn't have to look around and see who was watching. I just walked through those double doors. I was somebody that came up. Matter of fact, I'm glad the boys are not with me now because they'll be turning all kinds of shades of red. I was K Man. Superhero. Jumpsuit, put me in a mask, put a cape on me. That was caveman. That's 
to the speed bullet. No. But however, I did get to walk around with a big bag of candy and scare the kids half to death. Well, there's a runner from me trying to chase it down, give him candy, how it looks, and they didn't know what was behind the mask. Praise God. You, you see, there, and that's a silly analogy, but let me give you the application. As it were, there's a door that leads into the presence of God. And it says, as it were, Authorized personnel only. Not everybody can go there. Not everybody can walk through that. The Bible said that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. In our church services, when the Lord allows us to enter into his presence and he begins to reveal his glory to us. Not everybody understands that. That's why they'll look at us like, when you people done lost your mind. Because the, the presence of the Lord, where the spirit of the Lord is, where's the spirit of the Lord? Let me push you a little bit. Is it exterior or is it interior? You say, well, it's a little bit of both. Maybe so. But you know the reason why? You and I feel what we feel. You know the reason why we feel the elation of worship that we feel? It's not so much that he's on the outside touching us. He's on the inside, moving in us. Praise God. Glory. That, that's the reason why you, you and I can be driving down the highway. And all of a sudden, presence of God. You feel the presence of God. It's not that God moved into the car. It's that God is moving in you. And you feel what's happening in your heart. Amen. Because you have just made divine access into the holy presence of God. Amen. And it's not an exterior thing. It's interior. Yeah. You say, well, how do we feel it? How does all of us feel it? Have you ever been in a service? I've been in general conference with literally thousands of people. Thousands of people worshiping at one time. Sound like a solid roar of worship. Clapping and shouting and dancing and so on and so forth. Then all of a sudden, it's like somebody goes, Shh. and there's a holy hush. And it gets so quiet, you could hear a pin drop. Why? Access. And God says, I've got something to say. The gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. The operation of the Holy Ghost. is so powerful, so beautiful, so magnificent. Praise God. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Again, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence. Boldness, access with confidence. By the faith of him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Romans. Uh, I don't have any clue what time it is. I'm sorry. Amen. Brother West said, don't worry about it. Hallelujah. Y'all may not. Y'all may be hungrier than Brother West is. <laughs> Romans chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. How do we get there, folks? How do you get how do you get there? The Bible said, Romans chapter 5, verse 1 and verse 2. Therefore, being justified by faith. 
justified. There's an old preacher that the man used to preach for us quite often in, in Amarillo, come through about once a year or so, Brother Ari Johnson. He told us one time, he said, break the word justified up into syllables. Just if I'd. Just if I'd. Just if I'd never sinned. <laughs> That's how we get to it. That's how we can approach him with boldness. Amen. That's the reason why we can enter into his presence like that. Justified by faith. We have peace with God. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access. By faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Amen. Praise God. Somebody said praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have peace with God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The, the Bible tells us very quickly, amen, look at Psalms 100. I want to talk about the attitude real quick, the attitude of our approach, how we should approach this after repentance, after we've asked the Lord to forgive us our sins. Psalms 100 Says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter. Everybody say, enter. Into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Yeah. You enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. One more scripture tonight in Hebrews. Amen. Chapter 4. Fourteen through verse sixteen. Praise God. Seeing then that we have a high, a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but with, was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Why? Why? Why is it important that you pray every day? Why is it important that you worship the Lord throughout the day. Why, why is it this relationship, this spiritual, spiritual relationship that we have with God? It, when, when I was pastoring, if I mess this up, Brother Driscoll could fix it up. But when I was pastoring, I would tell my saints, this is not kind of spiritual. It's a hundred percent spiritual. Not ninety-nine percent spiritual. A hundred percent spiritual. Say brother music, that is flesh. No, we're carnal. But everything we do affects the spirit. 
Amen. You are not a body with a soul. You're a soul with a body. Every, everything you do, everything you say, every everything happens to you affects you spiritually. Yes, sir. Give me prove it. You want proof? You're hungry. You're at work. And you ain't worried about carbohydrates or sugar. And somebody walks in with a donut. And they give you a donut. What do you say? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Am I right? You're walking down the street. You have to glance down. You see a twenty-dollar bill land against the curb. Come on, man. Uh, Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Everything in life. Affects your spirit. Everything. And so this is not kind of spiritual. It's 100% spiritual. Whether it be to the neg negative connotation or the positive connotation. It's spiritual. It's how we adjust ourselves toward the spirit. Man, I'm getting off into some stuff. Go ahead. It is how we adjust ourselves. That's why the Bible says we are temperate in all things. Yes, sir. That's why the Bible talks about mortifying. The Apostle Paul talks about mortifying the beings of the body, bringing this flesh under subjection. It may be called the spiritual. I am not debtor to the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Amen? Amen. I owe my flesh nothing. Good. Nothing. I'm the biggest cry baby. I'm just confessing. Right? I'm the biggest cry baby. Powder. Ah. On those days where you're going, okay, you're not eating today. You're going to fast today. I remember back in the old days, we used to pray and fast. Now we just pray fast. Yeah. Those days when you're going, okay, I'm fasting tomorrow. <laughs> Why did you say that? What are you doing to me? That everything looks good. The things you can't stand looks good. A can of sour crop that somebody gave you six years ago looks good. And I can't stand sauerkraut, but on that day, I think I could cut me up some weenies, throw it in that sauerkraut, and enjoy being German for a little while. Yeah. Amen, but we owe this flesh nothing. Because it's the spirit man that counts. And it's the willingness to understand that you and I have access to places that not everybody can go there. In his presence is fullness of joy, and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Praise God. And we have access. We have divine access. My question is why don't we go there more often? Knowing what we know, why don't we go there? Take advantage of, if you will, the presence of God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I, I love it in the summertime where we live. Amen. I, I love it, I love it, I love it. Amen. When the Lord comes to me, and I, I'm wrapping it up, trust me, believe me, I, I'm wrapping it up, probably. When the Lord will come to me about three, four o'clock in the morning, and you're nudging me awake, it's, it's like he comes to me and he says, 
Get up. I want you to come with me. And I wake up and I feel that pulling, that drawing of God upon my heart, yes. upon my spirit. And I get up and I put my, my pajamas on, my, my shirt and all that kind of stuff. And I open the door walk outside and I have a, a sidewalk in front of my house that's probably from here to about that, that vestibule and I walk up there and just as soon as my feet touches that sidewalk I've just made access into the presence of God you know look up at the stars And I feel his touch. Amen. I feel that wonderful warmth. I don't know. And I don't want to sound silly. But has the Lord, has the Holy Ghost ever hugged you? Yes, sir. Yes. Have you ever felt that? Yes. Wonderful touch. So strong, so real, so precious. God says it's just you and me. It's not a church, it's not a revival, it's not, it's just me and you for a little while. I just want to, I just want it to be me and you. How beautiful is that? Why in the world do we sometimes roll over? Why are you so tired? Do you understand? God Almighty, God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth, just gave you a divine invitation to walk with him in the cool of the morning. How beautiful is that? How wonderful is that? Yeah. Let's all stand together. Thank Praise you. God. Divine access. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you for this privilege. Thank you for this privilege. Thank you for the honor of yeah. loving you. Lord, but by your grace, by your grace, by your grace, I am what I am. Praise God. Can we love him? Can we just say thank you, Lord? Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the privilege. Thank you for the honor. Of loving you, stepping into that place, stepping into that place Hallelujah. of the holy presence of God. If we could understand it like this, church, Moses saw a burning bush out in the middle of the desert. And the bush was it consumed. And Moses starts walking toward that burning bush, wondering why it's on fire, but it's not consumed. He takes a step and nothing happens. Another step and nothing happens. He takes another step and nothing happens. But then he takes one more step. And God begins to talk to him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Moses, take off your shoes. For the ground you're standing on is holy ground. Oh, what made that desert spot holy? Hallelujah. What made that place of 
sand, dust, smoke, the burning bush. What made that holy? Nothing but the presence of God. Access. Divine access. I've sat in restaurants and wiped tears from my eyes. Yes, sir. I've been in prison, jails. Just this last Sunday morning, I preached twice at the county jail. And the presence of the Lord was so strong. Bible teaches us in Acts to feel after the Lord. Feel after the Lord. That you might find Him. For He is not far from every one of us. Can we raise our hands and love? Jesus, I love you. Thank you for giving us access. Thank you for giving me access into your presence, to your throne. Glory to God. Amen. God bless you.